My earliest childhood memory. Well, I remember... Now, my sister and I slept... This was when we lived on 3rd Street. And my sister and I slept... I think it was a single bed. But anyhow, my mother came and said, Are you all right? And I said, Yeah. She said, You were throwing up. I said, I was. She, and I said, No. And she said, Yes, you were. See, too much strawberry shortcake. That's one of my earliest, and I have never thrown up since then. 86 years old, I have never thrown up since then. I slept through it. But then I slept through Kevin's birth, too. Yes. The head nurse, nurse, um, she didn't speak to me the whole time I was there because I didn't get to the delivery room. I slept right through his birth. And I was a scaredy cat. I remember sleeping in that same bedroom and there was a bush just outside the window mm -hmm. and I would wake up and I was sure there was something out there. But I never screamed or hollered or anything. I just went back to sleep. That bedroom is my earliest memory. And then I remember uh, I, had, I wrote a song about a chicken. How a chicken drank. And I remember my mom came to the first grade and insisted that I had to play the piano and play that song that I wrote. And I remember how embarrassed I was. It was my mother's doing. My mother was a teacher, you know, and once a teacher, always a teacher. She was a teacher in a one-room schoolhouse in South Dakota, and she taught uh, all eight grades. And in the winter, the Norwegian boys that uh, were immigrants came to her class to learn to speak English and to read English. She kept corresponding with them for a long time. Even after she married and came to California, they, she still came, kept in touch with some of those. They were men then, but... I learned to play the piano there in that house on 3rd Street. She, my mother taught me. I felt like my mother was asking the impossible of me. Oh, and I want to tell you a, an experience I had. Now, my mother was a teacher, I told you. Mm -hmm. She was also a substitute at the Ripon Christian School. This was when I was in the third grade. There was a reed organ, just like mine. Mm -hmm. And my mother said, Roberta will play the hymns today. And I thought, okay, it's me. So I got to the piano, and the first one I knew, and I played. And the second one I knew, and I played. And then my mother quoted a number in the hymn book. I said, I don't know that one. Try it. Mother, I don't know this one. Try it anyway. I said, I don't know it, and I can't do it. So I had to stay after school and write a hundred times, I must learn to obey my teacher. Trust and Obey is one of my favorites. Fur Elise by Beethoven is one of my favorites. That's a smidgen of it. I also love all the Beatles music and I'm a poetry lover. Oh, I love the stone walls do not a prison make, nor iron bars a cage. Minds that are free and innocent find that to be a hermitage. If I have freedom in my love and in my soul am free, angels alone above enjoy such liberty. That's um, Richard Loveless. Yeah, that's who wrote that. I have three pet squirrels, Tippy. And I don't know who the other two are. Um, one has a crook on his tail, but I feed them. And then I have my precious blossom. Lotus Blossom is a cat. She has a ring tail, but she sleeps with me. And right now, she stays close to me. And if it thunders, she's gone. I think...
Let's see. I can feel them. Oh, there's one. Do you want the door open? For teenagers. Appreciate the fact that you're alive because you may get old and they'll take away your driver's license and you get you won't even be able to do your own shopping. So while you're a teenager, live every moment of the day and night and find something good in everybody and in every situation.